Hi, everybody. Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Happy Monday. Coming at you with our last break of the night. 2022 Bowman Baseball Hobby Case. 12 boxes. Pick your team number eight. No vet paper, no rookie paper, no prospect paper ship, but a change from previous years. We are shipping the Bowman first paper. And then, of course, all chrome and everything else, of course, obviously ships and all the hits and whatnot. All right. Big thanks to everybody here for getting in on the action. Appreciate it. Thanks for spending a bit of your Monday night with me. Josh with the Last Spot Mojo Star Tigers. We did this straight, no filler. So I appreciate everybody getting into the action there. Thank you. All right, let's pop open this case. Let's pop this open. Rex was doing a little uh, Google Earthing and was checking out our shop. And he's like, yeah, that's a nice part of the world. Yeah, it is, Rex. It really is. Yeah, we're at the top of PCH. So yeah, that road is Pier Avenue, Rex. So that goes straight down to, you guessed it, the pier. It's actually a downhill walk. Walking back up it is a little bit more difficult, depending on, on, uh, on how many adult beverages you, you had at the pier, which is what some people tend to do. Good people watching there, a lot of nice restaurants, a lot of nice bars. The beach is obviously there. Yeah, the two McDonald's that are in the area are actually pretty interesting. Oliver's right, Oliver's in the area. The one south of us is a tiny, is there even dining inside that one? I think there is. I think there may be a few tables in there. But essentially, it's just like a kiosk <laughs> relative to other McDonald's. It's like a kiosk, and it's just a drive through basically. It's pretty small. They might have one or one tiny table outside, one or two tiny tables outside, um, and then you just swing through it. It's, re it's really narrow. And then the other one that's north of us, that's across the street from that grocery store, uh, kind of has like an old 50s design. They've got like a couple of big golden arches that go over the building. So that's a cool design there too. Yeah, so we're at a good location. Rex, if you go, go down, if you're still on the map, if you go down Pier Avenue, you'll notice that there is actually a fire, a police station there. No, a fire station there. Fire department, which is why, you know, they come, they come up here Avenue and they go north or south along PCH, which, which is why you always hear the sirens. Correct. That little one is right across the street from the Trader Joe's and the Starbucks. And there's like that little green park that's on the corner there on Aviation and PCH as it has a, has a huge windmill, which is a nice little touch. But yeah, very, very chill part of town. A lot of families live here, really beachy sort of vibe. Um, and I think like, I feel like there's a mix between families and I feel like a a lot of college kids live in the area too. I know uh, my, my friends um, had, had a house out here. But yeah, a lot of college-y vibe kind of out here. And then north of us is Manhattan Beach, which I feel like um, it's more upscale than Hermosa Beach, and that's where all like a lot of the a lot of athletes live in Manhattan Beach. And Hermosa Beach too, but I think a lot of, a lot of athletes live in Manhattan Beach. There's uh, Michael Escoto, orange paper, 17 out of 25.
Yeah, a lot of LA Kings live in her. I think. Uh, oh, a lot of LA Kings live in Hermosa Beach. Yeah, I think so too, actually. Um, I remember. I think Kershaw and his wife used to live in Manhattan Beach. And people would say that sometimes you'd see Kershaw having like a beer and a burrito in like Hermosa Beach. Like along the pier. But I think once they had kids, I think they moved they moved to a larger larger area. Right. Lakers Kings practice facility is in El Segundo, which is just north of Manhattan Beach. And so yeah, that's why you end up having a lot of Lakers. Lakers and Kings live in the area. And then you've got, uh, does Shaq live in Hermosa? Or used to live in Hermosa? Kenley used to live in Redondo Beach. I think he moved to like the Palisades, right? Or Palos Verdes, that is. Which is a little bit south of Redondo Beach. There's Noel V. Marte to 250, purple, uh, lava. Oh, Kenley was your neighbor in Redondo, <laughs> nice. Uh, there's that, you know that Whole Foods in Redondo Beach? I remember a number of years ago when our shop was down in Redondo, um, I think I was wearing like a Dodger hat or something like that. And then someone behind like the, the bread or deli counter or something like that was like hey dodger fan i'm like yeah i'm a big dodger fan you just missed kenley jansen early today it's like oh apparently he goes that's his whole foods there's jose rodriguez refractor to 499 rangers that's for louis and here's our autograph tyler whitaker 86 out of 250 for the astros that's gonna be for david any relation to Lou Whitaker? No, I don't think so. All right, box one in the books. Corey Seager frequented the Redondo Beach Target. I don't know if I've been to the Redondo Beach Target. I've been to the Manhattan Beach Target. Uh, I think Oliver, I think Thomas ran into Corey Seager at a, at Panda Express, believe it or not. Last summer? Right, the Manhattan View Target is on my way home. Although they're, they're not open very late, so I can never pop in. That has to be like a before I go and get into work kind of trip. Although they did build a city target near where I live, like a, a tiny target. So that in Santa Monica, and that's been great. But yeah, I think Thomas ran into Corey Seager and maybe a lady friend of Corey Seager's. I don't think, I don't think he's married, right? Maybe his girlfriend or something like that. They were dining in. I love it, Corey Seager, just like us. Oh, Corey is married now. Okay, okay. So maybe that was what was was the wifey just enjoying some Panda Express. Rex has a serial arsonist in his part of the world near Fort Wayne, Indiana. 
Did they catch the the cup the person? There's Khalil Watson to 499 paper for the Marlins. That'll be for Dusty. There's uh, Daria Lopez, Blue Lava to 150 for the Pirates. That'll be for Mark Miller. And here's our autograph, another Astro. Two for two for the Strohs. There's Dory Lorenzo. David Cope with the Strohs. He's heating up. Yeah, what, what was his uh, what was his his motivation for that? Who knows? Yeah, arsonists. Uh, I think there is like an FBI like psychological profile for arsonists. Jordan Lawler to 125. Nice aqua parallel for Andrew. Remember the movie uh, Backdraft? With, was it is Kurt Russell, I think? There's Logan Cerny, Blue Lava to These can sometimes these can be autographed too. And uh, of course, I'll do an autograph recap at the end. And remember, folks, uh, obviously, we've been doing a lot of this Bowman baseball over the last week, you know. Give the shipping team an extra, extra day or two. A lot, a lot of stuff to sort out and ship. So give them a little extra time, a little patience, to get all these hits to you, along with all the other breaks too. If you go to our break schedule, ladies and gentlemen, um, which is always pinned in the chat and frequently dropped in the chat by my virtual assistant Nightbot. There is actually a shipping tab that you can click over to on the bottom. Or I think maybe on a, could be the bottom or top depending on how you're accessing that spreadsheet. I think sometimes it may look different on like a mobile browser or something like that. But either way, there is a shipping tab, whether it's on the top or the bottom. You can click that and that'll give you some status updates on, on the day of your break. So you just have to figure out when your when your break broke, go to that day and you can see the shipping status. So it's a pretty useful resource. Tell your friends. So this arsonist, which they, they did end up catching, 
Apparently, the, it actually did some serious damage to a Kroger. And they, he set fire to, the char, to a charcoal end cap. I guess that's probably a good place to start a fire if you're into that sort of thing. I'm not. I'm not advocating it. They put out the charcoal fire pretty quick, but you're right. A lot of smoke damage there. The worst part was the sprinkle systems went off. So anything cardboard was ruined. Oh man. What is it? So what happens there, Rex? The Rex, give us give us the inside scoop in the grocery store world. Are you shutting down or did they shut down? I'm assuming they shut down the store. It's just all hands on deck, everyone's just throwing stuff away. And then you just have to wait for your next shipment to get that back. There's kettle marte, lime paper to $3.99. And a redemption. It's a Cub. James Triantos. Chrome Prospect autograph. Looks like just a base parallel for Mark Bissett and the Chicago Cubs. Wow, it was closed for six days. I believe the workers helped pull everything damaged, then reorder. They have a special fire and cleanup crew coming to make sure everything's safe. Got it. What a hassle. I hope that guy gets punished to the full extent of the law. In your, whatever the arson laws are in Indiana. There's a Victor Lizaraga. Lizaraga, I think? Lizaraga. Lizaraga. Orange Shimmer, 2 out of 25. Nice little number there. Love the orange parallels. Mark Bissett with the number 10 Padres prospect corner of Baseball America. Nice. Rex, finish this sentence for me. Grocery store workers hate it when customers... Dot, dot, dot. What's like a big pet peeve that maybe people may not, may not know? Sometimes I pick something up and realize I don't need it, but I have to admit, I don't put it back in the section that I got it from. Is that something? Or is that not really a big deal? I'm a good cart returner. I return carts. I'm good about that. Box. Ah, Rex's pet peeve is when a group of people will stand in the middle of an aisle and talk, not pay attention when someone needs to get by. Yeah, I don't like that either. I've heard, okay, I've heard something crazy. Um, I want to say it was a, I don't know who it was, maybe someone's, someone's mom or dad, or maybe an old T 
teacher or college professor or something like that. That how they would shop is... Oh, is it, I think multiple people have told me this. Where they, they will put the cart at the end cap. They, will, they basically don't bring the cart through the aisle. That they leave the cart at an end cap. They walk down the aisle, grab the item they need, and walk back to their cart. Not, that's that's not my my supermarket strategy. I definitely I definitely try not to take up too much aisle space. I'm almost keeping the cart right against the the section. You know what I mean? I want people to get by. That's for sure. But yeah, some people just meander down the middle of the. Middle of the aisle, that's, that's a little frustrating. That irritates you a lot. Yeah, but some people swear by it as a strategy. Like, I leave my cart at the end cap, I walk down, grab my box of cereal, then I'm back up, pick up my cart at the end cap. And then I said, well, what about your, your personal items? What if you have a bag or a backpack or a purse? Like, they're, no, they, they like, yeah, they take it. What about a small child? They leave the child as they go down the end cap. All right, so not putting something back is par for the course, but when it's meat or dairy is when it makes you mad. Got it. When you find a package of steaks down an aisle instead of a cold section. Yeah, if you're picking up and putting down meat, you can't put it in the, the, the Trisket section. Can't do that. Yeah, end cap shopping, I don't know. That's not my, that's not my shopping strategy. Anything else, Rex? We have, you have any grocery store hacks for us? Any grocery store hacks? All right, we got a blue chrome, 002 out of 150, Rodolfo Nolasco. For the Pirates, that's for Mark Miller. Different Mark. We got a Mark M. Ooh, nice. Reginald Preciado. These are the, I think, Invictus card or something like that. Nice. 10 out of 50. So this is on a slightly thicker card stock. These are pretty nice. Yeah, that's a beauty, right? Mark Bissett, Mark B. With the Cubbies. Nice, is that? That's an on-card auto, too. It almost looked like they had made a design space for a sticker. But it looks like Reginald, at the very least, was able to get that on-card. Nice. It's funny, if people always put cold food back in the cold section, and completely stop stealing, prices would be so much cheaper. Yeah, I can't imagine how much of our pricing is due to just, just spoiled food and theft. Rex is saying that guy plays for the South Bend Cubs now. Nice. Actually, it doesn't look too bad on Chuck.
Oh, that was like, that was Tyler Hero's look. There's Victor Lizaraga. 52 out of 125 Aqua Shimmer for the Padres. That'll be for Mark Bissett. All right, next box. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming so too. Yeah, Rex is saying, I'm not sure about Ralph's or other stores Kroger owns out there, but in Kroger in general, self-insured, so they pretty much eat any loss. They'd say it's cheaper than having outside insurance. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I think, uh, I think, it, I think there's a lot of like clothing retail businesses, I want to say, just have X amount of percent that they just write off as an expense and that's just that's just loss Jaspi insurance is is pretty ridiculous. Um, I want to say years ago, I, I I I don't know about now. Uh, I try to avoid discussion of the grown up conversations, taxes and insurance. Um, but I I remember years ago when we first ventured out to get our own office space. This is probably like six years ago or something like that. Um, we had difficulty finding anyone who would insure us. Because they'd be like, what? Because, you know, long since, you know, long gone are the days where there seemed to be a baseball card shop on every other corner and one in every single mall, right? So they were just like, what? What are we insuring you for? And they're worth how much? <laughs> little piece of the cutting process at the factory. Got a little piece right there. And we've got Hendry Mendez, 258 out of 299, speckle autograph for the Brew Crew. That will be for Stephen. Stephen Carney and the Brewers with the number 32 uh, prospect in the Brewer system by Fangraphs. We got Alejo Lopez to 299. Fuchsia paper from Mark B. And the Cincinnati Redlegs. Yeah, I mean, it's like a, it's like a lot of insurance companies, I guess. I'm paying all, a lot for insurance. People have car insurance, you know, but how many accidents have have people been in in their entire lives? Unless you're a bad driver, I guess.
right. so saw this game. Maybe a little uh, MLB tonight. Could be a nice little background noise for this long baseball break. Got a little quick pitch. Let's get some quick pitch going here. Got lime green paper to 399. Trey Sweeney for the Yankees. Mark B. And we got Pete Crow Armstrong, 81 out of 125 for the Cubbies. That'll be for Mark B as well. I don't, know. I don't know if it, you should really think of it that way. If something happens to you, you know, then it works the other way around. I feel like it evens out at some point. But really, you shouldn't really be thinking of it as as a as a you're competing with fellow, you know, insured insured people, the fellow insured. You should be looking at the profits that some of these insurance companies are making. And you're like, hey, why isn't that being reinvested back to me? You should be thinking of it that way as opposed to thinking, hey, I'm paying for someone else. I think that's a little too too narrow. You gotta ex gotta expand that and be like, wait a second, why did that CEO of my my insurance company why did this guy like land record bonuses? No offense to any CEOs who uh, major health insurance companies that are watching right now, but come on, you guys make a lot. All right, next box. Uh, prediction tomorrow for Suns Mavs. Are there going to be refs at this game or not, Joe? Because if there's refs at this game, you know that they're, they just have it out for the Suns. They they all got together and they're like, how how can we just make Suns fans' lives miserable? Let's ruin their year. Ooh, another redemption. That's Tyler Whitaker. Didn't we see a Tyler Whitaker? I guess he signed his parallel autographs, but not his base autographs, uh, David. So, redemption. Is Scott Foster really? I. <laughs> who makes these? Who makes the ref decisions, Joe? Does the NBA or is there the, the NBA has to, right? 
someone in the league office? Maybe in conjunction with the, the ref union? Why would they even why would they even do that? There's Cabrian Hayes to three ninety nine. Now I, I don't think there's you know I don't I don't believe the that that something like that can be rigged just because you know, especially in this day and age, social media and someone's gonna leak something to somebody. You know what I mean? It's it's hard to keep people's mouths shut in this day and age. Um but at the same time, there there are the numbers, you know, that the NBA or that all the networks, sports networks talked about. And then they're just like, why would you invite that kind of controversy? Then it's going to be talked about. Then it's, Chris Paul is going to be asked about it. That's a distraction. And they're going to be like, you know, Sports Center and Daily Wager and all the, the gambling shows that are out there now are going to be like, well, the Suns with Chris Paul are one in five when Scott Foster, you know, refs a Chris Paul. And then in his, Chris Paul's history, you know, Chris Paul is, there's Ellie Dela Cruz to 150, Blue Shimmer for the Reds, Mark Bissett. Oh, it worked out that I think they planned the ref guys at the beginning of the you know, series. Yeah, I think so too, but. I don't know. Then I guess it would be an even bigger story if they did change the referee assignments after they were released. Oh, no. Must be part of the machine. Kind of ruined that. Well, I, I'll be honest with you, Joe. I cannot see... I cannot see the Suns having three bad games in a row, right? Fouls notwithstanding, I think, and you, admit, you admitted this too, that they just played poor. You know, so I can't, but that's two poor games in a row. I, it's, I don't think they've had, you know, in the regular season, how many times have they lost more than like two or three games in a row? I could probably count that on one hand, right? Three game, lo three game losing streaks? Once, maybe? All season long? Twice, perhaps? But... Suns are back at home. I don't think they're going to have two bad games in a row. They've never lost three in a row this season. Right. I think going back home is going to help them big time. I mean, that's that's what the home, field fan, home court advantage is all about, right? You know, if home team does their job first two games, and then the home team on the other side do their job, win their home games... You know, and then, and then sons have to come back and do their do their job back home. Some of the role players, I think home court advantage doesn't matter for superstars, right? Like Chris Paul, Devin Booker. You know, those, those guys aren't going to be too affected by where they play. You know, Luka Doncic, Shalen Brunson, generally doesn't matter. Um... However, I think it does matter for role players. So I'm looking at the stats for game four for the Suns, right? Like Bridges. Bridges had a poor game. But he'll probably be boosted by just being com more comfortable at home. You know, guys like Bridges, guys like Cameron Johnson, you know, who are some other guys that, are, that maybe get 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes? Like... Cameron Payne, who gets 15, 20 minutes. You know what I mean? Guys like JaVel McGee, who'll get 10, 12 minutes. Like, they're all going to be... Those role players are going to be better at home. And remember, even without, even without Chris Paul, they, they lost by nine points. You know, maybe some of those points were a little bit of... A little bit garbage time points for the Mavs towards the end. You know what I mean? 
like if there was some fouling and whatnot at the end. Oh no, campaign's been garbage, Joe P is saying. Every time I shoot the ball, you say no. Boy, giving him the Westbrook treatment. What's the, let's see what the line is for the... Uh-oh, Joe P getting a little nervous. Where did all that where did all that confidence go? Yeah, playoffs are a different animal, man. Regular season, absolutely, you know, Suns were excellent, but Monty Williams, coach of the year. Colson Montgomery, two fifty, purple purple lava. I think that's well deserved. Phoenix is minus six. Um, I don't know if I take Phoenix minus six. I think it's going to be a close game, Joe. Well, it's only 2-2, two, two, not a must-win game. It's not like losing will put you down 1-3 or something like that. But isn't there that crazy stat that like teams that win game three will win, who won game three? Teams that win game three will win like 60% of the series or something like that. It's Curtis Mead to 499. And Christian Gonzalez, another Astro autograph for David Cole. There you go, David. Yeah, so I guess there is a sort of must win feel there. I think straight up, you got to think the Suns win straight up. If you're, if you're, you know, if you're into wagering, if you're into investing, as I like to say, investing in teams, according to the spread. Um, I think there is some value in Dallas plus six. It's like a Suns win by four sort of situation. Game five in a seven-game series, Rex. Yeah, it's basketball. Did basketball used to have, is their first round used to be five games, maybe? Maybe like 10, 15 years ago? I feel like they changed it. I feel like the first round used to be a lot shorter. Maybe I'm wrong. Or has it always been seven? It was, right, back in the day? First round was a five-game series, maybe? Because I remember when they changed it, I, I remember thinking, man, we're almost in, we're almost to July, and, you know, and the finals are just wrapping up. Yeah, so I, I think I remember thinking, boy, playoffs are long now. Two, two and a half months of playoffs. It is, it is exciting though. Playoff basketball is a lot of fun. Playoff anything is a lot of fun.
The other game, folks, is uh, Sixers at Heat. I know it's a baseball break, but it's pretty long. We've exhausted a lot of baseball topics today. Sixers at Heat. Uh, Miami is minus three. Who do we have here? That's going to be another good game. That series also tied at two. And Sixers got Joel Embiid back. wants to be pulled on huh? there is Trey Sweeney now Joel Embiid being back really changes the scope of that series there's uh, Lenyon Sosa 7 out of 25, Orange Shimmer. That's for the White Sox. That'll be for EA. I, know, I think the Heat win that one. I feel like the Sixers are kind of weird. Like the games you think they should win. There's Luis Verdugo, purple paper to 250 for the Cubs. The games you think they should win, they don't win. And then the games you think, because my initial instinct was, well, they got Joel Embiid back, they're going to win. I feel like they lose this game, then win the next game. And Giancarlo Stanton, green paper to 99 for the Yankees. That'll be for Mark B. Yeah, Rex. The Reds, I think, have Cincinnati Reds have five wins, five or six wins on the season now. Won their first. Yeah, the Reds won two in a row, three of their last five. Joe P saying the Diamondbacks more impressive. They've won six of their last seven. I feel like the Diamondbacks actually kind of have a sort of have a low-key, good young team that just needs some experience. I like Zach Gallen. Madison Bumgarner, great veteran pitcher on that rotation. Mark Melanson's a pretty solid closer. I think Dalton Varsho, that's a that's the young catcher. We've pulled a lot of Dalton Varsho rookies and rookies over the years. I mean, he's a, a kind of a yeah, kind of a higher end, highly touted prospect. Christian Walker is a good kettle. Ro kettle Marte is solid. I think Alec Thomas is another prospect playing now. Paven Smith, Seth Beer, those are like the. Those are some big names. There's Daryl Hernandez, one eleven out of one fifty. So Alec Thomas, Paven Smith, Seth Beer. Varsho converting to center fielder. This is for the Orioles. That's going to be for Aaron. So those are some names that we've kind of been seeing in as prospects in products like this, you know, a few years back. So So who's catching them? Well, I think it looks like Carson Kelly's on the 10-day IL, so maybe Varsho's catching again. ESPN has him as a, ca a catcher on the death chart. I think Jordan Lutlow is another another name that we've kind of seen in the sort of prospect rookie-wise. So there are some names. 
Is the NL West the best division in baseball? I think so. Actually, I could say I think yes. The last place team in the NL West is the Diamondbacks and Rock, Rock, Rockies are a half game ahead, but the last place teams have 16 wins. They're the only division where every team is over 500. Wow. Sixteen and fourteen, it's a five thirty three win percentage. They would be in third place in the NL Central. They'd be in second place in the NL East. Five thirty three would put them in third place, AL West. They would be in second place in the AL Central. And they would be and AL East is close. They'd be in fourth place in the AL East. Uh, I don't. I don't play. I don't. I don't invest in a lot of win totals for baseball. But if I did, I think I would have taken the unders, under wins, for a lot of the. NL West team because I feel like there's I feel like a lot of those teams are going to beat up on each other. Although I feel like the Rockies were a little bit of a surprise. I didn't think they'd jump out to this kind of start. Next box, good luck. Helio Ramos, 41 out of 150, blue lava for the Giants. Ricky with the Giants. I think they call that lava, right? That's what I've been calling it. There may be an official name for it. Rockies always end up crashing as do the D-backs, Joe P is saying. Yeah, but I don't know. They're too they're too scrappy. Too scrappy. There's Young Colorado Sand to three ninety nine, lime green paper for the Yankees, Mark. I wonder with the with the playoff structure this year. There's gonna be a lot more teams that are gonna be involved. There's a Daryl Hernias to four ninety nine paper for Aaron and Baltimore. Just got his autograph not too long ago. I think we're still looking for the autograph in this box. And there is 
the autograph. Rookie auto, Jackson Coar, 002 out of 499. Refractor autograph for Andrew and Kansas City. All right, three boxes to go, ladies and gentlemen. Almost there. What are the... Uh, do we have any early surprises, early disappointments for teams in the baseball season? <laughs> the Yankees are 20 and eight, 20 and eight on the season. I feel like the first week was a little rough, and I, I want to say like Yankee New York sports media, Yankee sports media were like freaking out. Now they got the best record in baseball, I think. Let's see, Yankees have 20 wins. Rays have 18 wins. The Rays are always solid. Blue Jays 17 wins are always solid. Baltimore 12. Well, I'm a little surprised that I know the I know the Red Sox have had a lot of injuries and COVID ILs and stuff like that. I thought Boston would be a little bit better. Still a long ways to go. Obviously, it's very early. But if we're kind of doing the one month and a week overreaction kind of thing, 30 games into the season, well, the Red Sox might would be doing a little bit better, but they've lost five in a row. Subway series this year? Could be. Mets are doing really well this year. Um, yeah, let's jump to the... Let's jump to the other 20 game. Yeah, Yankees and Mets are the only teams first to 20. Oh, Angels have 20 as well. Although they have 11 losses. Their winning percentage. The Mets also have 10 losses. I guess winning percentage wise, Yankees 714, Dodgers 704, then it's Mets, then it's Angels. But. Yeah, Mets are looking pretty good. They've 20 wins, 10 losses. They've got a run differential of plus 36. But I think this is where those underlying numbers are interesting. The Dodgers run differential, they're plus 70. I think that's that's tops in the league. Yeah, next closest is the Yankees at plus 49. But plus 30 something at this stage of the season is pretty it's pretty good. So if they had like 20 wins and their run differential was like, you know, I don't know what's the lowest amongst first place teams is the Twins at plus 25. So maybe there's like a little, you know, maybe that's, they have 18 wins. So maybe you're thinking, hmm. out of 499, Reed Detmers. Could be Subway Series though. Right, so like the Padres run differential, they're in second place, but it's plus nine. Right, as opposed to the Giants who are in third place, their run differential is plus 27. So Padres, I don't know, maybe, maybe not playing as well as their record shows. Joe, everyone's been saying Tina Fey, Keenan Thompson, Seth Myers are in the running to replace Lorne on SNL. You think it should be Conan? Uh, I don't think Conan fits at all, actually. I think he was, he was barely a cast member or a writer on SNL. 
I think if anything, he has he has shown that he wants to kind of slow things down as opposed to ramp things up. There's nice Reed Detmers rookie auto, 57 to 100. So he's stepping away from his daily late night show to do a weekly show. Nice Reed Detmers for Patrick and the Angel. I like Conan a lot, but I don't think he's a fit for SNL at all as head honcho for SNL. Seth Meyers and and Tina Fey makes makes sense. Yeah, but he wasn't there for very long at SNL. He, he may have even gotten fired. I don't think that's his bag. I think nothing in his career arc says, hey, he wants to 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 executive produce or show run SNL. There's Peyton Wilson to one twenty five. Out of 299, Emmanuel Rodriguez. Fuchsia paper for the Twins. Yeah, so even less reason that he would do SNL. I think he can run things the way he wants to, not in the sort of structure or you know tradition of SNL. I mean, SNL can be pretty, pretty restrictive, and I think Conan's at the stage of his career where he's like, he's like, I can do whatever I want, and put my own name on it and stamp on it, and have creative control over everything. You know, Tina Fey kind of makes sense because she's like, she's had a very wildly successful TV show, Thirty Rock, so she's done that. Not sure what else she's doing afterwards. There's Ryan Mountcastle. So maybe instead of writing, you know, a TV show like 30 Rock, maybe maybe more of an executive producer role she might want to get into. I don't know. I don't know what her what her post-30 Rock career has been. Keenan Thompson, I feel like he still has other plans that he wants to do. Like he wants to be in T I think he has a TV show, right, that he's launching. So he wants to do TV. He wants to act more. Maybe do some more movies. Maybe write some movies. I think maybe, I feel like he's been kind of angling towards that. So I don't know. Maybe Keenan Thompson, maybe not right now. Seth Meyers, though. Both him and Tina Fey have head writers on point. Seth Meyers kind of makes sense. Unless Seth Meyers takes the James Corden job. Remember, the James Corden job is up. So maybe Seth Meyers wants to kind of upgrade there before he runs SNL. Unless SNL gives him a bunch of money. Seth Meyers, I don't think ever really considered himself an actor, so I don't think he really wants to. I don't think he wants to. He doesn't want to be in TV. He doesn't want to act or be a star of a show or something like that, the way like Tina Fey did. Um, I don't know. I don't know what Seth Meyers wants to do. More late night stuff, I guess. Take the James Corden job. Right. Yeah, talk shows are kind of that dead, right? The way they're currently done. I mean, James Corden was wildly successful because he did, he did like YouTube video type stuff, right? Consu YouTube consumable type stuff, like carpool karaoke and you know all sorts of stuff like that. Yeah, Jimmy Fallon, you know comes up with so many like fun little games and he kind of gets how people are going to consume his talk show. 
So he creates various bits that are like almost, you know, you're fishing for a viral video and a lot of times he gets it. I guess Kimmel kind of runs a regular talk show, but he's been around for so long, so I guess maybe that traditional, that, that's, the, that's the space for the traditional talk show. There's Ed Howard at 499. So yeah, maybe Seth Meyers doesn't even want to do that. Maybe Seth Meyers has more freedom doing the Late Late Show, you know, where he can just, it's like less pressure, he can do his thing, still get some creative stuff done. Andre Lara to three ninety Although one wonders, for whoever takes over SNL, uh, why? I mean, it would be pretty gutsy if SNL went. How old was, how old was Lorne Michaels when he first started at SNL? How old was he? Thirties, maybe. I think it would be it would be pretty awesome if if SNL and I don't know how much say Lorne Michaels has over I guess maybe he does he created the show right um, so I guess he had, does have a pretty pretty big say in who takes the, takes over for him his successor but I think it would be you could really shake things up and if he could find I don't know who could do it, but if you can find like someone that's like pretty relatively young. There's Austin Martin, refractor 499. You would have been 30? Yeah, what if you find another 30 year old and say you're gonna run SNL? <laughs> you know, just to really freshen up SNL. Someone who still gets the tradition of SNL, but, you know, can really keep it relevant for another 50 years or however long it's been on. 30, 92 out of 100, Atomic Refractor, Yoswar Garcia. That would be for the Phillies, David M. But I don't know. I mean, what's what's Lauren's day to day? Lauren still yeses or yeses and nos sketches, right? So maybe you do, you do need a grown up in the room <laughs> these days. Maybe you do need a grown up with a lot of experience, and then you just hire and you just hire sort of sort of talented head writers, I guess. To, I don't know. There's also like, who wants that job? I don't know if that's necessarily, uh, it's like it's like taking over for, for a coach that has won multiple championships. You know what I mean? Like how do you follow like Bill Belichick, you know, on the Patriots? Although there, there's that succession plan maybe in house, but can't really follow Bill Belichick. That's that's tough. I would not want to. I would not want to be the first. I would not want to be the first. Uh, the first manager, first head coach after Belichick. 
Like, I don't want to be the first, whatever Lauren's title is, I don't want to be the first that after Lauren Michaels retires. You do need someone younger, although sometimes you just can't trust those uh, those big media corporations to do the right thing. No, I can't. I can't imagine. I mean, when SNL started, the media landscape so different from when it started and what it is now. You know, SNL in the early, like a lot of shows, had time to sort of evolve and and breathe a little bit but here first bad episode that happens or the first flop there it is you know here's the era without first episode without Lauren Michaels a bomb there's Wilman Diaz to 99 so He's planning on retiring after the 50th season. I'm sorry, but I, I, there has to be a succession plan. You know, there there must be something going on. There has to be something going on. I'd be surprised if Lauren Michaels must must have been knowing know that he's going to be retiring for ages. There must be. I can't imagine that they're gonna. I, I know that. You know, we're far from the heights of popularity for SNL, but you know, it's. Still put out pretty good content, you know. And internet has made things a lot easier just to consume the best stuff, and you just forget the rest. There's Brett Beatty to 4.99. Mets. We don't have to watch live anymore. There's this is our last autograph, Victor Lizaraga. For San Diego, that's for Mark B and the Friars. There must be a succession plan in place. I can't imagine Lauren Michaels gonna be like, "Well, I'm retiring in five years, three, five, three to five years." And then, uh, good luck, NBC. Good luck finding a new me and keep the show running. I don't, I can't say that I remember the, the seasons from the early 80s when Lauren left, but I mean, you got to think there's a succession plan. There's probably. Something in the works. There's Curtis Mead to two ninety nine, Speckle. Yeah, I think that's just fan talk. I mean, I I, I got to imagine there's someone in the works that that you know that isn't already a star. Like, you know, I start thinking like, I don't know, why would even Tina Fey do it? You know what I mean? Like, I would imagine she's got some 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 other, you know, the people who've been on TV and been in movies. I feel like you got to rule those people out. You know, because. You're, act, you're act, asking an actor to go into an executive role. That's that's a sort of a role that they may not be comfortable with. The only people I person I think might be qualified is Seth Meyers, because I don't think he he's he's never been on like TV as a TV show actor, like as a lead. Maybe cameos. He's not in really in movies, right? Nor does he have the intent to write or direct movies. He's doing a talk show, which is not too different from what he's done in SNL. 
And I feel like he's kind of smart enough and kind of low-key enough to maybe want to be that sort of Lord Michael type. But Seth Meyers is also a little young. There might be on the younger side. Maybe he's got other things he wants to do before he locks himself into an SNL job. Anyway, that was 2022 Bowman Baseball, 12-box Pikachu number eight. Yeah, long breaks like this. We end up talking about a lot of different things. So if you watch the entire video, we've meandered through a lot of topics. But that's the kind of fun we have here at jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'm Joe. That was Pick Your Team 8, Hobby Pick Your Team 8. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.